welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of surface engineering and we are talking about the materials for surface modification so that uh, our functional surfaces can be designed in such a way that they offer uh, desired travelogical life. In the previous presentation I have talked about the thermal barrier coating materials which are uh, primarily used for reducing the temperature of the main component while outside temperature may be higher. At the same time they are also used to uh, resist the material loss from the functional surfaces which are working at a high temperature using the suitable combination of the material. Uh, in that one we have also seen that uh, the thermal barrier coating materials may have significantly different uh, properties from the substrate especially with regard to the thermal expansion coefficient and if the thermal expansion coefficient is significantly different then under the thermal cyclic variation conditions it can lead to the spalling chipping of or separation from the substrate and therefore uh, we use the bond coat. Uh, in the line of the same, in the similar lines, if we need the material properties in such a way that one side it has a one kind of property while on the other side it has a another kind of property, then we need a different kind of the uh, material. Uh, say we want that material is very hard in one side and very tough on the other side. So, this kind of the di uh, extremely different combination of the properties uh, which are not available in uh, conventional materials. So, to satisfy such kind of requirements, uh, the special category of the materials has been uh, is being developed that is called functionally graded materials, where there is a gradient in terms of the properties from one end to another. Uh, like say uh, at the surface we want completely different set of the properties as compared to that of the substrate. So, we would like to have the properties at the next to the substrate are slightly different than at the surface uh, then the further second layer is of the different property, third layer is of further different property, fourth layer is of further different property. So, what we try to do like if the substrate is of a, a low hardness we can say like 200 HV, then we will develop a layer of the 300 HV, 400 HV, 500 HV, 600 HV. So, means we are trying to um, have the different layers of gradually changing properties and uh, conventional materials are, on, uh, are not of this kind wherein uh, in the same uh, material we have uh, gradually changing values of a particular property and this kind of variation we may require in terms of the toughness, in terms of the hardness, in terms of the optical properties in terms of the electrical properties. So, if you want a gray, if you want a gradually changing properties uh, from the substrate to the surface, we need to have the special category of the material and uh, that is what is called functionally graded material and uh, such kind of the property variation where uh, where we will have say for this combination we will have increasing toughness this side and increasing hardness this side because the two pro properties are directly opposite to each other. So, uh, if we want to have the higher hardness then it will be done at the cost of the toughness and likewise for the toughness. So, this kind of the gradual variation is possible through the gradual variation in the composition, gradual variation in the structure of the material which is being developed. So, that uh, the property required property variation can be achieved. I uh, will try to explain this in a slightly different way. Say uh, this is the uh, one material. Uh, and we are reinforcing the, this is the material which is soft and uh, ductile. So, this is tough material, right. And if we reinforce the higher fraction of the hard uh, 
particle like ceramics uh, are reinforced in a very large concentration at the surface and then concentration is gradually decreasing as we move below the surface then, then we will clearly notice the gradient in terms of the hardness and in terms of the toughness. So, what we will notice in this case since the concentration concentration or the volume fraction or the composition of the uh, material is changing layer by layer and that is why there will be continuous variation in terms of the properties. If the, the, if the second phase which is being reinforced is hard and the matrix is tough then we will be seeing here in this direction matrix toughness is increasing and in uh, this direction the hardness will be increasing. And similarly, we can uh, develop the materials which uh, will be having the varying composition and uh, varying uh, structures so that required uh, set of the mechanical, electrical or uh, optical properties can be achieved so that required functions can be realized. There is another example like uh, in one side if you want uh, the greater thermal conductivity and less refractoriness then this side we will have the 95 percent of the copper and 5 percent of the tungsten and on the other hand increasing tungsten concentration and reducing copper percentage at the top we may have 95 percent of the tungsten and 5 percent of the copper and such kind of the materials will certainly offer the in this case it will offer the increasing increasing uh, electrical conductivity and uh, uh, while in the opposite direction it will be offering the increasing hardness and increasing refractoriness. So, such kind of the gradients are although possible uh, through the controlled variation in composition or the constituents so that the required combination of the properties is achieved. Uh, and uh, so, that variation like say the composition or constituent variation if is plotted uh, in the x axis and the properties are plotted in the y axis then the varying composition like uh, in this case uh, tungsten or like say hard particles tungsten carbide if they are reinforced in the aluminum then what kind of variation will be getting. We will see that hardness is continuously increasing, tensile strength increasing, on the other hand toughness and uh, ductility is decreasing. So, such kind of the continuous gradient is possible by having in a material continuous variation in composition from the layer by layer approach this kind of variation in properties in very controlled way is possible for developing the functionally graded materials. There are variety of the materials which have been developed for uh, making the surfaces which are wear resistant wear resistant materials. So, uh, most of the developments have taken place around the development of the iron base wear resistant materials although the cobalt and nickel uh, base uh, wear resistant materials also have been developed, but those are for the special and specific applications. Since the most of the developments have taken place uh, for uh, uh, developing uh, for making the wear resistant materials around the iron base alloys and uh, therefore, there are 8 broad categories according to the American Society for Metals, there are 8 broad categories. 8 categories of the wear resistant materials. Uh, so, I will talk about uh, uh, each of the category one by one uh, that, uh, that what kind of the properties 
and they offer and what for they are primarily used eight categories of uh, uh, wear resistant ferrous materials which have been developed uh, so we will be looking for the these categories one by one like the category one basically it is the ferrous category of the low alloy steel low alloy ferrous category having the low alloys concentration alloy concentration is less than 10 percent and uh, it uh, has these offer the the alloys having the low alloy concern low alloying concentration means that is less than 10 percent and offers the hardness lower than the 450 weakest hardness and these are primarily used for impact uh, abrasion conditions means those conditions which are coupled with the impact and uh, the low stress abrasion conditions uh, because it has lower hardness so the toughness is good that is why these are better suitable for impact coupled with the abrasion resistant applications where good uh, abrasion resistance under the impact condition is required and abrasion is of the low stress kind then there is a second category uh, which is also the ferrous uh, alloys and uh, it has a higher carbon content as compared to the the first category one uh, but the alloying concentration in this case also is less than 10 percent but the hardness because of the higher carbon content is greater than 450 hv and uh, because of this uh, it is primarily used uh, for abrasion resistant applications where uh, like the sand soil uh, are uh, to be handled using the blades. So, blades are uh, uh, hard faced or uh, covered uh, with the uh, with the category 2 uh, wear resistant materials um, if they are to be used for handling or uh, uh, handling or um, uh, like in excavation or the uh, uh, or uh, uh, removing the sand and soil uh, during the operation then um, uh, such kind of the materials will be able to uh, will be able to uh, reduce the abrasive wear resistance effectively uh, then there is a third category in third category uh, these are the again the ferrous based medium alloyed steel uh, medium alloyed materials and these have the 10 to 25 percent of the alloying elements and the hardness is in the range of the 450 to the 700 hv so the hardness is on the higher side but these are used for the high temperature applications means abrasion uh, under high temperature uh, conditions like 300 to the 600 degree centigrade. So, this kind of the conditions exist in the hot rolling mills. So, uh, since the hot rolling mills uh, will be experiencing the abrasion under the height uh, adhesion as well as abrasion uh, at a high temperature. So, in order to resist the uh, material loss by wear under such conditions category 3 ferrous materials are used for surfacing so that the travelogical life can be enhanced and the material loss from the functional surfaces can be reduced and then we have the another category uh, 4 which is also of the ferrous medium alloyed steel having 10 to 25 percent of the alloying concentration but these are of very low hardness like 200 to 250 hv basically alloying of the nickel 
manganese kind of the elements are used these have the low hardness. Uh, so, initially their hardness is low, but these offer very good work hardening capability and because of this work hardening capability these suits very good for impact adhesive and abrasive wear conditions. So, these are used for uh, such kind of the conditions uh, where impact coupled with the abrasion and adhesion is involved. Then there is a fifth category where in uh, the higher concentration, concentration these are iron base and these are high alloy materials having the alloying concentration greater than 25 percent and uh, these are uh, these will be having the hardness less than 450 HV and uh, these are used for corrosion resistant applications corrosion resistant application and for the buttering purpose. Then there is a category 6 kind of the uh, and the materials which are primarily used for uh, primarily these are the ferrous systems and uh, these are used for hard facing. Primarily these uh, consists the chromium carbide, chromium carbide which is of the hardness of like 1500 HV. This is much higher as compared to that of the martensite and uh, uh, to realize this uh, the chromium in this is in the range of 25 to 30 percent while carbon to form the chromium carbide it is found 2 to 6 percent. So, these are high chromium and high carbon hard facing systems which are uh, primarily used in the agriculture, agriculture field, mining industry and uh, used also in shoots uh, where uh, high abrasion is involved. So, mainly in the mining industry, agricultural industry and uh, uh, cement industry wherever the abrasion uh, is a dominating such kind of the material systems are used. Then there is a category 7 kind of the materials which are used for uh, wear resistant application. These are also of the ferrous systems. These have the tungsten carbide as a main element for enhancing the wear resistance capability. The, the, the tungsten carbides offer the hardness to the tune of 2000 to the 2200 HV and these are designed to be in the martensite matrix. So, martensitic transformation is common and these are reinforced with the tungsten carbide. So, uh, they offer the good uh, resistance to the abrasive wear condition. So, martensite offers the hardness to the tune of 700 to 900 HV. Uh, so, martensite itself is considered to be very good uh, uh, in terms of the wear resistance and when it is uh, uh, reinforced or when it has the tungsten carbide then it offers very good uh, resistance to the abrasion mainly in the components which are used for digging, excavation, uh, in the construction industry such kind of the hard facing materials are used and then the last one eighth category of the ferrous based systems which are used for wear resistant applications. These are designed to have the complex carbides and which are which are and these complex carbides are uh, are uh, realized uh, through the presence of the chromium tungsten, vanadium, niobium and molybdenum elements coupled with the high percentage of the carbon. So, they are stable carbides are formed and whenever such kind of the materials are developed uh, means the 
iron based systems having the complex carbides they offer very good hot hardness or high, high temperature wear resistance because these complex carbides remain stable up to 600 degree centigrade without losing much of their hardness and uh, that is why these are used for high temperature applications like in pulverizers and uh, sintering plants. So, we have seen that there are 8 categories of the materials uh, and which are of the 3 broad families uh, uh, which are primarily of the iron based family, ferrous based systems, but there are 2 other categories like nickel based uh, alloys and the cobalt based alloys. Uh, so, uh, what are the uh, different constituents, different hardnesses, what for these are used that is what we have talked about the uh, ferrous based systems. Now, we will see. Um, now, we will see uh, how to choose the kind of materials if there is a very wide range of the choice, uh, wide range of the materials are available for choosing uh, with. So, uh, there is a general guideline uh, for the choice of the materials that is what I will be uh, making here. Uh, here like say this is high toughness. Uh, and this is high abrasion resistance, this is toughness and this is high temperature. So, uh, this side low, this side high, this side low, this side high. So, there are uh, low and high. So, uh, what we will see uh, high abrasion resistance and toughness is low because uh, when abrasion resistance is high this uh, the will have be having the higher hardness and when the hardness is high uh, the toughness is low. So, uh, this kind of situation is there when the carbides like tungsten carbide, chromium carbide filled uh, electrodes are used. So, they offer a very good abrasion resistance, but, um, uh, uh, but they uh, offer the low toughness. On the other hand, uh, here we can use uh, the low abrasion resistance and uh, so like uh, medium and low carbon steels, high carbon steels. Uh, on the other hand, we, good combination of the toughness as well as the high temperature resistance, what will have uh, like uh, the ferritic stainless steel and austenitic stainless steel, martensitic stainless steel, chromium molybdenum steels. And here high temperature uh, like nickel and cobalt base alloys. So, this is the category where they have high toughness as well as high temperature resistance. Uh, the medium toughness and medium abrasion resistance is available with the and good toughness is available with the ferritic, austenitic and martensitic and chromium molybdenum steels. While on the other hand uh, uh, on the top we have abrasion wear resistance. So, all these like uh, high carbon steels, carbide uh, filled uh, uh, electrodes and the low and the medium carbon steels. So, this is the like say broad guideline for choosing for uh, choosing the materials for various applications. Now, here I will uh, um, write uh, some of the materials for variety of the applications uh, like uh, for uh, abrasion conditions if the abrasion conditions are being experienced by the component then coating of alumina and uh, chromium uh, oxide Cr2O3, uh, the chromium carbide and uh, the nickel chromium systems are used and uh, for uh, cavitation erosion conditions uh, nickel titanium copper nickel 
and 316 AISI 316 stainless steel and cobalt, chromium, tungsten, carbon systems are used for cavitation, cavitation resistant applications. Uh, for liquid erosion like in hydro turbines and uh, pumps, uh, the stellites you know, which are cobalt based alloys and uh, nickel tungsten carbide based uh, uh, composite systems are used for fretting wear conditions uh, nickel chromium carbide uh, systems are used and for impact sliding conditions sliding under the impact conditions um, uh, cobalt tungsten carbide nickel chromium chromium carbide systems are used uh, while for galling conditions means the adhesive we are under the high temperature conditions uh, nickel chromium chromium carbide systems are used for adhesive via conditions cobalt tungsten carbide systems nickel chromium systems are used and for the dry sliding conditions dry sliding conditions like cobalt tungsten carbide chromium oxide and nickel chromium chromium carbide systems as well as nickel chromium boron silicon systems are used. So, these are the as per the kind of the wear conditions which are being experienced the variety of the materials which are available can be used so that uh, the suitable uh, uh, wear resistant functional surfaces can be developed in order to resist the wear. Now, um, now how these materials will be applied how to apply these materials for that variety of approaches uh, exist and uh, these include uh, like uh, the thermal spraying, weld surfacing, laser cladding and likewise the list is endless. In all these cases, we need to build up a layer of the suitable material on the substrate. So, for this purpose, we may use the spraying, we may use weld surfacing, we may use laser cladding, etc. Uh, but there are various other methods wherein we may like to uh, modify just the surface structure. So, that required set of the properties are achieved. We may like to modify the surface composition. So, that required properties are achieved or we may like to build up a completely different materials layer. So, that required properties are achieved. So, these are the three broad categories uh, where um, just the structure is modified then the composition is modified and then third is a layer is developed. So, these are the three different approaches. Now, uh, in further lectures, now we will be starting uh, the different techniques which are used for modifying the functional surfaces. So, so far we have talked uh, about the different mechanisms that cause the material losses um, from the functional surfaces and we have also talked about the materials which can be used to resist the uh, wear uh, of the material from the functional surfaces. Now, we will see what are the techniques which can be used uh, to develop the functional surfaces which can resist the tribological conditions for enhanced tribological life of the component. Thank you for your attention.